Hello, you are watching the Chaos Channel. Today I will show you such strange and unusual animals that it is even hard to believe in the existence of some of them, unless you see with your own eyes. So fasten your seatbelts, we're off and we're going to start right away with something incredible. What you're about to see will blow your mind. We're looking at a desolate expanse of desert where the temperatures are sometimes absurd. It's hot as hell, and trees manage to grow only in the shade of canyon crevices, at least migratory birds can rest on them. There's the flycatcher, for example, with enough luck, it can find prey here. There are various spiders hiding in the crevices, though they're not plentiful, but it's better than nothing. And then she spots one climbing up, of course, such a chance cannot be missed, and the flycatcher flies to try his luck. I'm sure you didn't see that coming. Well, it just happened. How is that possible? A bird flies up to a spider and, suddenly a snake, jumps out at it. Is this some kind of incredible collaboration between a spider and a snake? An amazing animal symbiosis, not at all, it's all about this snake alone. It's one of the most amazing creatures on the planet. It was only recently discovered, and so far, other than in these parts, no other snake like it has been seen anywhere else. It's vicious as hell, but it's even more cunning. Its superior camouflage makes it virtually invisible among the rocks. When it's not moving, it has moving scales on its tail that look like spider legs. And the tip looks like a belly, and the snake uses its tail to the maximum, luring unsuspecting victims directly into its mouth. It's a magpie, she hasn't eaten in a couple days and sees something that looks like a spider. The bird thinks it's going to have lunch now, but in the end, only it gets eaten. Okay, not this time, the snake went without food. But who will never go without food are the era parrots that live near the Amazon River, because if something happens, they can start eating the ground. No kidding, as strange as it may seem, there really are animals that eat soil. Dozens of different species are vying for a better spot, the queue progresses in strict order. Unfortunately, some large birds of prey take advantage of these places, trying to attack the parrots peacefully eating the soil. So they fly away at the slightest hint of danger. But they don't always return, or look for a similar place. Since they want to eat soil very often, parrots can sit here for hours eating soil, arguing with each other for the best places. Another thing is when these birds are nursing their chicks. In this case, everyone is in a hurry to eat, restock, and fly away. Parents must bring and feed their chicks more than 5 kilograms of clay before they can fly. And all because, far from the ocean, these animals lack salt, and without it, the chick's brains and bones can't fully develop. But fortunately, the soil in these places is 40 times richer in necessary minerals than anywhere else in the surrounding forests, so they have to eat it. Once fledged, the chicks will fly with their parents for another year to get clay so they can memorize where to find it. It is useful not only for children, but also for adults, because it neutralizes toxins that birds get from the seeds of various fruits. In general, the phrase I've got you will eat land will not intimidate these birds. But the phrase I'll bury you in the ground will not frighten this double-breathing fish living in the muddy waters of swamps. Its unusual ability has allowed them to survive for some 300 million years. When there is a terrible drought and the water bodies dry up completely, these fish begin to breathe, air like mammals. Sometimes the drought lasts for several years, but for these fish this is no problem at all. They bury themselves in silt and make a burrow. The fish is covered with mucus, which dries out and becomes a dense sac that protects it from total dehydration. It slows down its metabolism and waits, a year or two or three passes. The locals have forgotten that there was once a lake here, but the double breeding fish are still waiting, walled up in the land. Local people make building blocks from the earth taken from the former lake, not even realizing that there is a whole fish inside the block. And so, when the structure is already built, the fish is in the wall, and suddenly the long-awaited rain falls. The moisture reaching the double breeding fish awakens it, filling it with life. The animal jumps right out of the wall, it's unbelievable. On the evolutionary scale, this solution to a problem changed everything. These fish have been around since before the dinosaurs, and it's clear why they've survived, and they're sure to have a bright future ahead of them for a long time to come. But who will definitely not have a bright future, 
is insects that fly to these beautiful lights that decorate the caves of New Zealand. And that's because, in the wild, light in the dark can sometimes be a death trap. These silky threads are woven by the silky larva of the mushroom mosquito. Despite the beauty of these threads, they have a sinister purpose. They are used to trap prey. The sticky droplets act like glue. Mushroom mosquito larvae, also known as fireflies, glow due to a chemical reaction in their tail. It creates an irresistible lure. The hungrier the larva, the brighter the light it emits, attracting victims like fire moth. There are hundreds of these fireflies, together they create their own starry sky, which can be considered the most magical illumination in the entire natural world. The spectacle confuses the insects flying by, which instinctively move towards the light but suddenly get stuck, becoming hostage to sagging threads and traps. At that point, they become doomed. Fireflies are insidious insects. The more you know about them, the more disgusting and ruthless these creatures seem. Firefly, catching prey, bites or tears the chitin of the insect and sucks out the insides. The length of a single thread can reach up to a meter. After catching the prey, the firefly turns off the light, so it saves energy. The firefly carefully makes its way to the thread, from which comes the vibration, and eats what hangs on the end, and also eats the thread. In this way silk is saved. The inhabitants of the Earth developed the ability to produce this marvelous material early in evolutionary history, over 300 million years ago. In the beginning it was most likely used as a gluing agent. This is what lace wings still do. This female lays her ants on plants. The only problem is that ants eat them if they find them. But the lace wing does something ingenious. She doesn't stick her eggs directly to the stem of the plant. First it produces a small drop of gluey silk and then an egg on the end of it. It ends up suspended safely in the air. The golden eye produces silk in liquid form through glands in the abdomen, but it is the process of excreting it outward that makes it solid, which is true of the silk of all invertebrates. It lays up to 30 eggs a day, each on a separate filament. This thread is so thin that insect predators, such as ants, run past the eggs without even realizing that there is a tasty meal just centimeters away. And despite the ants' regular forays in search of food, the golden eye eggs remain unfound. After three days, they begin to open and the larvae emerge. The larvae are now left to their own devices, but they have already gotten a big head start in life thanks to their talented mom. Madagascar longhorned beetles, whose appearance resembles creatures from anywhere but the real world, use their long necks to fight each other in the hope of getting close to this female, who doesn't have such a long neck. While the boys are fighting, she starts doing some ambitious construction. First, she bites through the veins of the leaf, making tiny folds. Then she uses her legs to fold the leaf in half. Next, she wraps the end of it and lays just one egg in the middle of the curl. Within the confines of the rainforest, all the females are busy curling their eggs into leaves, each seeming to have her own design. Only in these soft leaves can the females make their nest. Their behavior is absolutely incomparable. The fathers at this time drive away all sorts of insects, so that they do not begin to parasitize this leaf. The female is trying to make a semblance of Velcro that will help pull everything together. A few finishing touches, and the nest is ready. When the female bites off the leaf roll, it falls to the ground, where the baby lies in relative safety. Such a huge effort for the sake of hiding a single egg. But when we talk about playing hide and seek, there's no one cooler at it than the frogs recently discovered by scientists living in the humid Andean mountain forest. They've taken the art of camouflage to a new level. At first glance, they look completely normal, but they have a trick that really surprises scientists. It allows them to evade predators such as the ciliated viper, the snake's big eyes spot the prey, the frog jumps back and performs a crowning trick. It builds up three-dimensional camouflage like in science fiction movies. And the new form of color and texture blends perfectly with the moss. The rain frog shapeshifter was discovered in 2014, though perhaps the name transformer frog would be more appropriate. This professional of disguise lives in only 11 trees, in a huge forest, not this reef octopus. Unlike his brethren, he is a total loser in this business, and the flounder is just waiting for him to let his guard down. But he has found a great solution to the problem. An empty coconut shell can become a safe haven from the annoying stalker. Wherever the octopus goes, he takes it with him, but that's not the whole structure. 
For full protection, the other half of the shell of the right size will be needed. This ability to dispose of the shell in this way is the first known example of a tool being used by marine invertebrates. The octopus just takes it and closes itself up in the two halves, like a house. It's just incredible! No one would have believed it if they hadn't seen it. Now the animal can build muscle with redoubled enthusiasm. But the fish flounder does not have, it continues to harass the octopus. Meanwhile, the protected fortress has another unexpected advantage, the ability to roll away unnoticed. This cephalopod trickster has won another day with all his tentacles on him. If you're not impressed by an octopus making a house out of improvised tools, what about this Madagascar spider that does something similar? The empty seashell he just found would make a great shelter from the heat in a deserted area of the island, but lying in it on the sand is not safe. So the spider does something very surprising. It hooks a web to the shell and starts pulling it into the bushes. This is the first time this process has ever been filmed and possibly the first time it has been observed in the wild. Each new thread is shorter than the previous one. Gradually the shell is pulled off the ground. The key here is to make sure the shell is anchored from multiple angles to maximize stability. This spider didn't do everything right. When the wind picks up, the shell becomes uncontrollable. But this one does everything right, and soon he has a secure home that will protect him from all the evils of the world around him. But while some creatures use improvised means to improve their lives, others use improvised animals, like this amazing boxer crab. The tiny crustacean has to work very hard to survive in a cruel world where everything is so huge and dangerous. This fish wants to grab the easy prey, but it doesn't realize that our crab has a secret weapon a great pair of boxing gloves. A fish swims in close and a punch. A quick left hook makes the fish change its mind. Actually, it's not gloves, it's actinia. The crab has just taken these animals with its claws and is holding them as slaves. Now they have to protect him. In the tendrils of these tiny relatives of the jellyfish contains a powerful poison, and with each blow of the crab actinia painfully sting the attacker, who after that immediately retreats. But to survive, the champion must keep his gloves in perfect condition. Scientists have found that if you let the actinia loose, they can grow to five times their normal size. So the crab steals their food and starves them to keep them from growing to fit in its claws. The actinia become hostages that the crab keeps in its claws, an outrageous but ingenious method of defense. But it does not guarantee the crab 100% safety, because another crab will certainly try to steal this precious property. The fight for the right to possess the boxing gloves begins. During the fight, the attacker manages to steal some of the actinia, but even though one claw of our crab is now empty, it's no big deal. He simply takes the one remaining actinia and tears it into two pieces. Actinia don't die from this, they are able to survive even if they are torn apart. In time, these two halves of the torn actinia will grow back to normal size for the crab, and he will again have to excellent boxing gloves to knock out any opponent. In general, among the crab's many unusual species, take at least this one, which lives in the wet sands of the beaches of northern Australia. It seems that there is no life here, but in fact the sand is inhabited by many different microorganisms, and the sand bladder crab is able to get them. It can sift through the sand at a dizzying speed, extracting microorganisms and leaving behind balls rolled out of squeak. These animals clean every grain of sand within a meter radius of their burrow. Crabs have to hurry, as they can only sift sand while it is wet, and it dries quite quickly. They carefully line up their sand balls so that the road to the shelter always remains clear. Soon the whole beach is lined with sand balls, an unusual sight. Then the crabs return to their holes and wait for the next tide, which will again bring many microorganisms to the sands. Sand can feed various creatures in other ways, for example, if you use it to create a trap. In the African savanna there is a hunter, who does just that. This is an antlion larva, when it grows up, it'll become something like a dragonfly. And then its only purpose will be to mate, and it will almost stop eating. But right now, this predator is a ruthless monster, and her only job is to feed and grow. To do this, she digs a depression in the sand and lurks at the very bottom leaving her jaws as high as possible. She can move her head so fast that grains of sand shoot out like bullets. Now she waits, into her hole wanders an ant, 
who will be unable to stay on his feet. No matter how hard he tries to get out, he can't. The sand slips out from under his feet, gradually he gets tired. Then the ant lion with its poisonous jaws pulls him under the sand and eats him. For the ant lion, the best way to hunt is to remain inconspicuous. Sometimes many of these cone-shaped traps can be seen next to each other. Each one is a treacherous, deadly trap with a ferocious predator inside. Some ants get lucky and manage to climb out of the hole. But of course, not all of them. If the ant lion has grabbed the insect, it's doomed. Although sometimes there is still a miracle, and the ant manages to escape from the jaws. But here our predator has one more secret ability for these cases. The ant lion starts throwing sand into the air, creating a landslide. Unbelievable! The victim had so few chances, and here it is, rocks fall on top of the ant, and now there seems to be no escape. But even in situations like this, there are lucky ones, this ant managed to survive. But for one such luck, there are many less fortunate cases. After the ant lion has had its lunch, it begins to rebuild the trap and waits for the next guest. And although this insect living under the sand resembles creatures from sci-fi movies, it is still a long way from the fantastical nature of our next hero. This is Australia, a parched continent. On its vast territory there is almost no fertile soil, few plants and animals, as well as water sources. Few people are able to survive here. It's a reptile kingdom. Rainfall is very rare here, and a lizard like the Moloch has to compensate for the lack of water by eating ants copiously, up to several thousand a day. Most rain clouds pass by without dropping a drop. Well, sometimes the rain does irrigate the ground. And then the Moloch shows something incredible. He finds a puddle a couple of millimeters deep and puts his paws in it. Its skin, like blotting paper, collects moisture with the help of capillaries. Under the action of capillary forces, water travels through microscopic channels in the skin, becoming covered with glitter. When the water reaches the mouth, the Moloch drinks it and at this time he continues to look around for danger. Guys, in front of you is an animal that drinks water with its feet, more precisely. That's enough for now. If the video gets a lot of likes, then a new similar video will be released soon.